here this morning, you're having trouble sleeping. I must confess I've had trouble with a lot of things, but going to sleep at night ain't one of them. I have much harder trouble staying awake than I do going to sleep. But a lot of people have a hard time going to sleep at night. And there's three men in the Bible that I want to show you this morning. If you want to take a pencil or a pen or something and jot these three men down, maybe put them, stick them in the back of your Bible or something, that could not sleep at night, and there was a reason for it. The Bible has answers to all of our problems, and it's got the answer to this one. American people, they say, now spend one half billion dollars a year trying to get to sleep. Over 800,000 pounds of barbiturates every year in America. 200 different types of sleeping pills or medicine or potions. Neither the patients nor doctors are really aware of all the potential dangers involved in using drugs in order to go to sleep. Matter of fact, we're living in a generation that thinks the answer to everything is in a pill. If this is wrong, you can take this kind of pill. If that's wrong, you can take the other kind of pill. There's wake up pills, lay down pills, stay down pills, get up pills, stay up pills, back pills, throat pills, neck pills, tooth pills, ear pills, toe pills, knee pills, and, let me, and some of these older ladies, their, their house looks like a, a drug store, and then say, pray for my son, he's on drugs. You know, uh, now I'm not saying there's a, good, there's a good place for medicine, and really there is, but the answer to everything is not in appeal, folks. There's some things that appeal can't take care of. Uh, and you that are married, you sure, I'm sure you've been awakened into the middle of the night, and your wife will say, or your husband will say, Honey, 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 what? Are you awake? <laughs> Yes, I am now. What do you want? So he, she says, I can't sleep. He said, well, does that mean I don't get to either, huh? And I guess everybody's had that happen. Well, one lady called her doctor in the middle of the night. She said, doctor, I'm sorry to wake you up, but I can't sleep. He said, what are you trying to do, start an epidemic? Uh, and... I guess that's, I can some of you looking at each other, and I, I have uh, hit a sore spot right there, but um, many times people are, are sick and have a disease and can't sleep at night, and that's understandable. But sometimes people's problem is spiritual. It can't be taken care of any other way except getting peace between you and God. And if you're here this morning and you can't go to sleep at night because of a guilty conscience or worrying about what you've done, or afraid you're going to die, or afraid you're not going to wake up the next morning, or afraid the Lord's going to come and you'll be left behind, then the message is for you this morning. Three men in the Bible who couldn't sleep at night. The first two are kings, and the second one is rich. that tell you something? I don't read about a poor man in the Bible that couldn't sleep at night. There's three men in the Bible that couldn't sleep at night. Two of them was a king, and one of them was rich. that tell you anything? The first one is in Esther chapter 6. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Esther chapter 6, and it's King Ahasuerus. Now, if you see Psalms, you've gone too far. Go back to the left, and right before Psalms is Job, and right before Job is Esther. That's the way you find Esther. And it's in chapter 6, and look verse number 1. Here's a man who, in the Bible, could not sleep at night, and his problem was that God was trying to tell him something. There was something in his life that he didn't know, and God was trying to tell him something. Some people cannot sleep at night because God's trying to speak to them. They don't want to listen. They may not want to hear what God says, so they uh, try to drown it out. Uh, drowned out the voice of God with liquor or, or wine or maybe a stereo. There's all kinds of ways to try to drown out God's voice. I have known people that turn the stereo as loud as they could to sleep at night, and that is to drown out the voice of your conscience and God trying to speak to you. So you see in Esther chapter 6 and verse 1, the Bible says, On that night could not the king sleep. Now, 
hold your fingers right there just a second before I read the next part of this verse. As you know, in the story of the book of Esther, King Ahasuerus, king of all the land, was in charge of everything that went on. Now, it had happened a few years before this, or months, that this fellow named um, Mordecai had saved the king's life, but the king didn't know it. Now, there was another man in the kingdom named Haman who was plotting to destroy Mordecai's life. The king was in charge of who lived and who died as an absolute dictator. So this night he laid down and tried to go to sleep. He laid on this side aisle and he couldn't go to sleep. He laid on the other side a while and he couldn't go to sleep. He laid on his back and he couldn't go to sleep. He laid on his stomach and he couldn't go to sleep. He hung his head off the side of the bed and couldn't go to sleep. He put the pillow over his head and he couldn't go to sleep. He could not sleep. I mean, he was worried. Now, it was God that was keeping that man awake. Now, I figure this morning, if it's God that keeps people awake, it must be God that lets people go to sleep. And so getting able to go to sleep and get a good night's sleep at night is a gift from God that very few of us thank God for very often. You know that? When's the last time you just thanked the Lord that you could sleep at night? A lot of people can't. So you know what he did? He he done what a lot of people did. He said, I know there's one way. They didn't have barbiturates then. They had them. They didn't know how to use them, maybe. They didn't know how to use uh, sleeping pills then. They didn't have uh, sleepies and... Uh, or whatever, all the other kind of pills that you get. So he said, I know there's one surefire way to go to sleep. When there's no way to go to sleep and you want to go to sleep, there's one thing that'll put you to sleep quicker than anything. He said, I know one thing that'll put me to sleep if nothing else will. Bring the Bible in here. That's right. But you ever have trouble going to sleep, I'll tell you how to do it. Get your Bible out and start reading it. So I'm going to read five chapters. You'll never finish the fifth chapter. You'll be a saw in logs. I'll guarantee you. That you start, have, you ever had to, have you ever noticed that when you pick up the Bible and you start trying to read you, you know, it feels like somebody's laying lead on your eyes. When you, you get a hold of something, else, boy, it just perks you right up just like that. The devil will make sure you, you don't, he don't aggravate you to stay awake if you're reading the Bible or praying. Well, he said he commanded to bring the book of the records of the Chronicles. And they were read before the king. And then, as you know, it, 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 it was found out there that Mordecai had saved the king's life and the king made arrangements to reward Mordecai the, king, or the, the, the Jew for what he had done. It's this morning that that man, God was trying to speak to him and God was trying to tell him something. The next time you can't sleep at night, it may be that God is trying to get your attention. It may be that there's something not done that needs to be done. Excuse me. It may be that there's something in your life that is not right. It may be that you're tossing and turning and tossing and turning because God in heaven is trying to get your attention and show you something. But I said here that that man could not sleep. Notice he was a king. Notice he was a, had a lot of responsibility. I had rather be a poor man without a lot of responsibility and be able to sleep at night and enjoy my life than to be in place of great authority and have a lot of people under me and live a miserable life and, cook and can't sleep at night, wouldn't you? I'll tell you that was the first man. But let me show you the second man this morning. Turn to Daniel chapter 6. This man also was a king. Now Daniel is on the right side of Psalms. And you go right on past Proverbs. You go past Isaiah. You go past Jeremiah. You go past Ezekiel and start slowing down. You're getting ready to hit Daniel. And in Daniel chapter number 6, we see the second man in the Bible that the Bible tells us could not sleep at night. Everybody look at it with me if you will. This is also in chapter 6 of the book of Daniel. Now, everybody knows this story. It's probably a more familiar story to you than was the king Ahasuerus. This was the king here in the book of Daniel. And the Bible said that uh, this man's name was Darius the Mede. He was king over the land here. And they began to... Uh, 
uh, make claws and, and begin to uh, got old Daniel throat in the lion's den and they made the law that nobody could pray to any other god for 30 days except this king. Now watch this. These men come in one day. Here was a king sitting on his throne. Now the reason these men were in there is because they hated Daniel. They hated the preacher and they said we're going to get rid of that guy if it's the last thing we do. And somebody said we'll find something wrong with him. And they said, you can't find nothing wrong with him. This guy, he lives above reproach. You can't point your finger at one thing in his life and say he's doing wrong. And they said, well, I know how we'll get him. There's one thing he does. He prays all the time. Let's go talk to the king into making a law that says nobody can pray to any other god but him for 30 days and then we'll get him on the basis of breaking the law. The idea. So they went into the king. Notice this man again. A place of authority. He come into this man and said, King, we've got a request and we've got your best interest at heart. Now, the bad thing about being a king and the bad thing about being a ruler, the bad thing about being popular and the bad thing about being rich and the bad thing about being over a corporation or a company or a plant is that when people are nice to you, you never know what their motive is. You ever notice that? Now, if you're just poor old white trash like us, when people's nice to you, you say, I've got a friend. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you. But when, but when uh, you want to get baptized right here today, don't you? So, when you're in control of something and people just come up and say, oh, I just think you're the greatest thing ever was. You say, yeah, I know. You're after something. You're out to get my bill pole, or you're out to stab me in the back. You're trying. Now, people that are in authority never know if their friends are really their friends. But here, you know, if you're, uh, if you're a hard-working, middle-class citizen in America, you know, boy, if people like you, they like you, and that's a good way to be. One good thing about being poor is your friends are your friends. But when you get in a place of authority and you get a lot and you're all over people, you never know if people's stabbing you in the back. You never know if they're genuine. You never know. I mean, look how many friends. Look at them rock singers. Look how many people love them. People don't even know them, but they love them. You know why? They figure I can advance up the ladder if I'm real to them and I can get on the good side of them, then maybe they can help me. So they came to the king and they said, King, you're just the greatest thing ever lived. You know that? He said, that's the way I like to hear you talk. And they said, listen, why don't, why don't you make a law here? I'll tell you what, I think that nobody ought to pray to no other God besides you for 30 days. Sound good? He said it sounds pretty good. And they said all we need is your signature right here. We've already had our secretary type up the law and if you'll just sign it, it'll be in effect. He said I'll sign it. He writes his name to rise the king. And boy, they take that thing out, they print posters, they put his picture all over town like Saddam Hussein, you know, just brainwash them poor people. And boy, they, they went on all over the all over the land and they said, oh, Long live the rest of the king. Long live the king. Long live the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians. And they said, It is law. Here one, here all. It is law. Nobody can pray to any other God except the king for 30 days. Law. And they said, Anybody that does will be thrown into the... Boy, they'd open that big old cage over there. Wow! And little lions then. Big old hungry lions over there. Ain't eat a bite since the last time we had one of these deals. And boy, they're ready to devour anybody that comes in. The word got all over town. Shut up your praying. Shut up your praying. Don't pray to the trees. Don't pray to the gods. Don't pray to... Buddha, don't pray to anybody else. And those people that had false religion didn't mind putting it off for a month. But a man that had the real thing just couldn't hardly do without talking to his God for 30 days. And so when Daniel heard that, somebody come to him and said, Daniel, you're a fine fellow and we like you, but if you don't quit that praying, you are going to end up in the... Boy, they throw that door open again. There they are. Lines then. And Daniel said, you know, I really hate that. Oh, boy, it's about time for prayer. 
It's almost lunchtime. And he went up in his room and he threw it open his windows like that toward Jerusalem. And he got down like this. He said, Oh God, I know you're God. Oh God. Boy, somebody said, Good night. That crazy fool up there praying. Don't he know that God, don't he know that he'll be thrown in the lion's den? Don't he know what's going to happen to him? But old Daniel just kept right on a praying. Listen, listen. If your religion is real and you've got the real thing and God has done something in your heart and you know that you've got the real thing, then what man says or does is absolutely immaterial to the way you worship your God. And buddy, I'll tell you what, it got him in trouble. Do you know sometimes if you stand for God, you'll get in trouble? God never promised you everything would be rosy if you lived right. It'll cost you. And boy, somebody, it wasn't long that he got reported, and they hauled him in. And the king said, now Daniel, I kind of like you, you're a nice fella. But he said, did you not know that we said that anybody couldn't, couldn't pray to me, nobody else but me, for 30 days? He said, yes, sir, I knew it. They said, you mean you're just going to defy the law of the king? He said, I'm sorry, I don't want to. I'm generally not a law a good citizen, but this involves me and God, and God's laws are higher than your laws. And they said, all right, open it up. You know the story. They went over, opened up that big old door, picked him up. Hold on. A two. You want to change your mind? Nope, can't do it. A three. Oh, right there and up. Shuts the door. They don't want to hear them bones popping. They don't want to hear uh, uh, that blood squirting. They don't want to feel, they don't want to hear uh, those screams coming out of there. So they shut the door of the lines in. Well, those three guys went out of there, or those guys that had him on, they went over there feeling happy. They said, ha, ha, ha. We done took care of Daniel and the king went in. King didn't feel too good. King didn't feel just exactly right that evening. And that brings us to the second part of the message. In Daniel chapter number 6, notice what the Bible said here. As Daniel was in the lion's den, look at verse number 18. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 18. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither one so much of music brought before him. He didn't even have his stereo on that night. And his sleep went from him. He could not sleep. So you know why he couldn't sleep, don't you? Why couldn't that man lay down and get a good night's sleep? All he could tell was that preacher, God's man, over there in the lion's den. Every time he'd close his eyes, he could just see one of them big lions. Hey, boy, every time, every time he almost dozed off, he could hear a scream. He said, Daniel's dead, and it's my fault. I put a good man to death. I don't allow a man to die. But boy, that king realized that he'd done a man wrong. You can't sleep good at night if you've done somebody wrong. Now, we know, and you know, what the king did that night. What the king did not know that night, that Daniel was getting a much better night's sleep than he was. See, when he first hit the bottom of that pit, I bet old Daniel went, Oh boy, this is it. Or, I've always wondered how it's going to go. And if this is the way you choose, that's fine with me. But God, I'd appreciate it. If you might could have mercy on me. And over here was Leo. And over here was Linus. And over here, and boy, they looked at each other and just kind of grinned. And they began to look up and down his calves and biceps and sat and begin to lick their chops. About that time, the Bible says that God got one of his angels over in heaven. He said, come here a minute. I need you to do me a favor. Yes, sir. What you need, Father? And, the, and, and God said, Go down there and take care of that man that lies in. All the way from heaven. Right down in the lion's den. Come over there. He put these cramps on these lion's jaws. Tighten them up real good. They couldn't see them, but they was all like a vice grip. And he just tightened that thing up. Boy, about that time, we'll say, our boys attack. And one of them looked at him and said, Boy, I'd like to have a bit of him. Mm, that looks good. I can't get in there. You know, and boy, he began, he could not open their mouth. All night long, he walked around. All night long, uh, they, 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 
saliva and just uh, just come running out of their mouth. Their teeth would not open. And old Daniel kind of got the idea after a while, and he started saying, "Hallelujah, well, glory, thank you, Jesus, Hallelujah, Lord." And boy, he said, "Leo, lay down right here." And boy, he laid down there and laid him a big, big lion skin rug, laid down his head on that nice soft pillow, got him a good night's rest, and passed the night having sweet dreams. But the king was laying up there in the palace, could not sleep at night. Listen, a man laying down there on an old dirty cold floor of a lion's den with enemies all around him with God's blessing can enjoy life and sleep better than a king up there in the palace living out of God's will. Hey, I'll guarantee you, I'll guarantee you that Tater Sheehan sleeps better than Michael Jackson. <laughs> I guarantee you. I'll guarantee you, I'll guarantee you that John Getty sleeps better than Saddam Hussein. I bet Saddam Hussein sleeps in a different house every night. What, don't you? If he's got any sense, he would. His days are numbered, man. That's all they are to it. I mean, one word and that old boy's done got himself in a mess. And unless he gets right with God, he's had it. I'm telling you, I'd rather be in a lonely shack, maybe with nothing, and maybe not not a car, maybe, and to have God with me than to be a king in the palace. Toss and turn. The example is the people... I'm, now, there's nothing wrong with having a $200,000 house. If you got one, great. I hope everybody in here gets one. That's fine. But it'll do you no good if your conscience bothers you so much you can't sleep at night. And you know how that story went. God delivered him. One more. This is not a particular man I'm going to show you. This, can come, this will relate to a lot of men. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Now, Ecclesiastes is not too far past Psalms. So you got Psalms, Proverbs, and start slowing down there a little bit and you'll hit Ecclesiastes. Chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, and notice what the says. This is rich men in general. Ecclesiastes chapter number 5 and verse number 12. Now, everybody look at this. Everybody in America needs to see this. Everybody needs to know this. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 12. Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 12. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet. That means you work all day long and work hard, you sleep good at night. Whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. My, 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 what a truth. What a great verse. What an astounding verse of Scripture this morning. That verse says this, If a man works hard all day long, he sleeps good at night. But if a man has a whole bunch of riches and a whole bunch of nice things, those things will not let him sleep. Isn't that strange? The Bible said in Psalm 40, verse 8, I will both lay me down and sleep. The Bible said in Psalm 127 that it's vain to sit up late and to do without sleep worried about everything because there's nothing you can do about it anyway. Let's notice what, uh, what we learn about being rich. Somebody said a miser isn't much fun to live with, but he sure makes a great ancestor. And that's about the truth of it. I'm telling you this morning that money has a way of getting a hold on you and never satisfying you. Did you know that? It, money will buy food but not an appetite. Money will buy medicine but not health. Money will buy thrills but not peace. A man who sets his heart on money will be disappointed that's it, or whether he doesn't. If he gets it, he'll find out that it wasn't what he thought it was. If he doesn't get it, he's unsatisfied because he didn't get what he wants. When a man wants to be happy, the last place he'll look is in a bank account. Happiness comes from God. Happiness comes from having peace in your heart. Happiness comes from knowing you're right with your Creator. And all the money in the world can't make you happy or make you sleep at night. Money never made a man happy, nor will it. You know who's that? Benjamin Franklin. He said, instead of filling a vacuum, it creates one. Do you know that 
you can't take it with you. Bible said, "Could you came into the world naked, you're going to leave. So if a man, if all he thinks about is cars, clothes, house, money, car, more this, more that, more this, more that, more that, the bigger an uh, empty vacuum that he's going to have inside. And the only thing that can fill that vacuum is the right relationship between you and your Creator. Now, I don't know who the, here this morning that needs to hear what i got to say as I close. But I want to say two things as I close this morning. And the first one is, you as a Christian, let me give you just a little practical hint, alright? You know what I tell, one time Carrie told me, my oldest daughter, she said, she said, Daddy, I just can't go to sleep. And I said, now honey, I'll tell you how to go to sleep. She said, how? I said, pray for everybody you know. Everybody you know, just start praying for them. Before you get through, you'll be asleep. That's right. Do you know that? Pray for everybody you know, and I promise you, you'll be asleep before you get through. You know what they say? What's the, what the way they've always said, go to sleep? What well, counting sheep? You know where that come from, don't you? I figured that out. Well, well that's what I'm counting sheep. And I lay down, if I can't go to sleep, I'll say, Lord, there goes Brother John, jump over the fence. Oh, there goes Bruce, jumped over the fence. He's in. There goes his wife, Chuck. she jumped over the fence. She's in. I can just say, there goes Anthony, he hopped over the fence. He's in, thank you, Lord. There goes Autumn, Choop. over the fence. So, thank you, Lord. And I can just see all of y'all just coming up and going, Choop. over that little fence. Count. You know, several years ago, y'all, you ladies made me the nicest little blanket for Christmas. And it was so nice for us. And it, it was about 1983 or 4 or somewhere along in our need to update that thing. Had all the families in the church name on a little piece of cloth and sewed it on a quilt. And I said, man, this is the life, isn't it? How easy, how easy it is for me to pray. I just lay down at night, cover up with that thing and say, Lord, bless so-and-so. Lord, bless so-and-so. And dear God, help old brother so-and-so over here. Did you know best way in the world for a Christian to get sleep? It's count sheep. Pray! Listen, I know people can't go to sleep without the TV on. I cannot stand TV on when I'm trying to go to sleep. Or radio on. I'm like, turn that thing off! I don't say I stand it! Just a racket, man. I mean, I'm try this. Lord, bless mama. Lord, bless my boy. Bless my girl. Lord, help our church. Lord, help all them missionaries. Lord, help them boys that just got to Saudi Arabia. Just one that we know of today. And you'll, it'll help you out. Then maybe your problem is worse than that. Maybe you're here this morning and the reason you can't sleep is like King Ahasuerus or King Darius. Maybe your conscience is bothering you. Maybe you're living away from God. Maybe you're here this morning and ah, you've been out partying. You was out partying last night. Maybe you're here this morning with a hangover. Maybe you're living like the devil. When you lay down at night, your conscience bothers you, and you turn and you toss, and you turn and you toss. Why don't you get it right today? Why don't you get a saddle today? Why don't you come to God today? You can lay down your sleep and go to sleep tonight with a clear conscience. You don't have to live your life that way. I don't know what your problem might be, but I know the one that's in charge of who sleeps and who don't. And he's not a psychiatrist. He's the creator of the universe. Let's stand and bow our heads. Every head bowed, every eye closed. While they get us a song, please, no talking, no one leaving the room. Can I ask you a question this morning? When you lay down tonight to go to sleep, do you have peace in your heart? Christians are praying, heads are bowed. Well, if you can't, if you can't, right up here is the place you need to be this morning. Three men in the Bible that couldn't sleep at night. You don't have to live your life that way. I guess what I'm trying to ask you is this morning, do you have peace in your heart between you and God? Do you have peace in your heart between you and God? Is it right? 
You say, Preacher, it sure ain't. Why don't you come to the altar this morning and make it right? We're going to pray that you'll do that. I wonder before we pray this morning, I don't usually do this, but I felt like I ought to do this this morning. Is there somebody here this morning and say, Brother Danny, God spoke to my heart this morning. Things are not right between me and God. And I want you and the church to pray for me. I'm not too proud or I'm not too stubborn to ask for prayer. Please, would you pray for me? Just your hand. Just raise your hand and we'll pray for it. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Anyone else? Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. God bless you back there, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. That's about eight hands have gone this morning. Please pray, church. Now, don't quit praying now. Now's the time to pray. Anyone else? Anyone else? Just raise your hand. Say, Brother Danny, things ain't right between me and God, but I do want this church to pray for you. We're not going to embarrass you. Nobody's going to, we're not going to point out or nothing like that. We're just going to pray for you. Anybody else? I see your hand over there. God bless you. All right, we're going to pray. And I want to ask you a question. If God spoke to you this morning, why don't you act on it? Why don't you move? Why don't you just get right out of your seat? We're all going to wind up in the grave. We're all going to face God. It's heaven or hell for every single one of us. How's things between you and God, friend? Dear Lord Jesus, I don't know who all these folks are that lifted their hands. And I sure don't know what all their problems and, and burdens are. I'm sure, I'm sure there's people here this morning with all kinds of problems. Please help them, Lord. Please help them. Please help them.